Welcome back to part two of my vanity tour. In this segment, we're diving into my makeup collection. From bold eyeshadows and eyeliners to everyday essentials, join me as I showcase my must-haves, but also some product mistakes along the way. In part one, I covered my skincare, or more broadly, personal care collection. I will start with face makeup. First up, the Clinique, even better liquid foundation SPF 15. I like this foundation because it's lightweight, has a wide range of shades, and includes SPF protection, so I can find a perfect match for my skin tone. Plus, its coverage looks natural. Next up, the Alverti Natural Cosmetics Concealer. Unfortunately, this one has caused some issues for me. My eyes become watery after application. It doesn't blend well and offers poor coverage. Despite being a natural cosmetics choice, it has been a total miss. It tends to clump, lacks creaminess, and appears dry and powdery. Rather than concealing, it seems to accentuate under-eye imperfections. After that, La Roche-Posay Telerion Corrective Compact Powder. This powder is great for setting liquid foundation. It's lightweight and almost invisible, giving your skin a natural finish. The skin-friendly formula is dermatologist-tested and hypoallergenic, making it suitable even for sensitive skin types like mine. With its mattifying effect, it helps me control shine throughout the day. Next in line is the J.Lo Beauty, that star filter complexion booster in warm bronze. This product is magic in a bottle, giving my skin a radiant, sun-kissed glow all year round. It blends beautifully, adding a lovely glow and freshness to my face. I wear it over foundation to bronze, highlight, and add warmth to my face. You only need a tiny dot to see the glow. When I want rosy cheeks, I use Deborah High Tech Blush. It offers lovely shades for a natural blush. It's a very good budget-friendly option. But unfortunately, I once accidentally dropped it, and the packaging broke. It's disappointing to see it break so easily. Moving on to the eyeshadows, the first one is Dior Mono Color Couture in shade number 45, a stunning silver. I love how beautiful and versatile the color is. It's also incredibly long-lasting and buildable. I can go from a subtle shimmer to a bold, metallic look with just a few layers. Next ones are Pupa Vamp Eyeshadows in Shades, Precious Gold and White Snow. They are now sold in new packaging, but I didn't notice any difference when I tried the new ones in store. The color intensity is excellent, and while they are shimmery, they aren't over-the-top sparkly. You can easily adjust the layering to achieve anything from a subtle look to a bold statement. Moving on to blues. First up is the REM Beauty Lustrous Liquid Eyeshadow in Milky Way. This eyeshadow is extremely pigmented, delivering bold color with just one swipe. However, I find it slightly challenging to apply precisely due to its slightly heavier texture. Additionally, I notice it can feel tight on my eyelid during application, but once it dries down, I no longer experience that sensation. After that, I have the Kiko High Pigment Eyeshadow in color metallic blue. This one is pretty mediocre for me. Not too bad, but also not so great. Somewhere in the middle. Last, I have the Sephora Colorful Magnetic Eyeshadow in number 20, 80s Vibes. It has good, buildable color intensity. You can put just a little bit for a subtle daily variant or layer it up for a bold, metallic, vibrant evening look. If you're enjoying this video, please subscribe to my channel for more content like this. It's free! Moving on to eyeliners, let's start with the NYX Epic Wear Waterproof Liquid Liner. I have both matte and metallic in several colors. They offer beautiful, bright hues. This eyeliner is very long-lasting. Once it dries, it stays in place the whole evening. It's easy to apply, thanks to its thin applicator. The texture may resemble paint slightly, but it's not a significant issue. Some people complain that it's hard to remove, but I use La Roche-Posay Waterproof Makeup Remover, which I mention in the skincare section of my vanity tour, and I have no trouble removing it. 
The next one is the Collister Waterproof Technico Eyeliner. Sometimes I have a bit of trouble applying a thin line precisely. It often ends up thicker than I'd like, which I encounter less with NYX eyeliners. It's quite long-lasting, similar to NYX. It's not bad, but I'm not super satisfied. It's somewhere in the middle. I bought it to try it out a few months ago. Moving on to eye pencils, first up is MAC Eye Coal in Smolder. This pencil is just the right balance of softness and firmness, making it perfect for defining the waterline and overall eye application. It's highly pigmented and delivers rich color payoff. However, the price is a bit higher. Next is the NYX Slim Eye Pencil in Electric Blue. It has an exceptionally beautiful color. However, it's a bit harder for my waterline than I would prefer. Last one is the Bourgeois Contour Clubbing 46. It's easy to apply and lasts a long time. My only complaint is that it's a bit softer than I'd like, making it difficult to create a precise, thin line, so it can be a little messy. However, it comes in interesting colors. Moving on to mascaras. Let's start with the Maybelline Lash Sensational Mascara. This mascara effectively separates, intensively darkens, and curls lashes, adding noticeable length. It stays in place all day without smudging or appearing under the eyes, unless, of course, you rub your eyes with your hands. This is one of my favorite mascaras. Next one is the Bourgeois Healthy Mix in Ultra Black. It's a clean and vegan mascara that offers nice volume and length, providing a more subtle look compared to Maybelline Lash Sensational Mascara. It's just a matter of personal preference, or for which occasion you are doing your makeup. The applicator separates lashes very well, leaving no lumps at all. All my brushes are from Sigma Beauty. They offer good quality brushes at an affordable price, and they are long-lasting. Some of these I have had for eight or nine years, and they still hold up well. Additionally, I recently added a few more to my collection. Moving on to lips, first up is the NYX Smooth Whip Matte Lip Cream. While the color is interesting and unique, the rest of the experience was disappointing. It smudges very easily and disappears as soon as you eat, drink, kiss, or touch your lips. I usually like NYX products and was swayed by the good reviews on the website, but I was deeply disappointed with this product. Next up is the Max Factor Lipfinity Liquid Lipstick. I've been using it for over a decade and I absolutely love it. It's extremely long-lasting and doesn't smudge during kisses like the NYX one. It's exceptionally durable, comes in beautiful shades, and is a very good budget-friendly option considering how good it is. Throughout the years, I've gathered a large collection of nail polishes. Today, I won't delve into them in detail because I have another video where I did color swatches for all my nail polishes and discussed each brand briefly. I'll include the link to that video in the description if you're interested in checking it out. It's titled, From Dollar One Nail Polish to Luxury. Thank you so much for watching part two of my vanity tour. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe for more similar content. Have you tried any of the products I shared? Let me know in the comments. Also, if you missed part one, where I talked about my skincare and personal care favorites and mistakes, check the link in the description below. See you in the next one.